Good morning, and welcome to Eternity Speaks. I'm your host, Reverend Bill Eggleston. I hope that everyone's had a great week and is doing well. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about the importance of being there for one another. Now, I know I've uh, I've touched on the subject before, but I, I feel it's, it's very important. Um, these days, everyone's struggling with something, and I know I've said that too, but it, it's true. Uh, and that being said, it, it's more important than ever to, to just be there for one another. Um, there are things going on in the world and even at home that are having a huge impact on people and, and their well-being. Um, every time they, they watch the news, they they get a little down and then it, it just kind of snowballs from there. People are, are they're hurting right now. Uh, some people hide their struggles better than others. Uh, it's not always easy to tell when, when someone's struggling. Um, sometimes they they'll use humor or they'll they just seem overly joyful you know like out of character uh and it's it could be a sign that there that something's going on um uh sometimes something just seems off you know they they may not feel like themselves uh sometimes they'll say or do things that they don't normally do uh and only the closest people to them can they might recognize that uh and they may be the only ones that can help them through it uh, sometimes it takes it takes somebody pretty close uh, to understand and to be able to to get through to a person. But that doesn't mean that you're the only one. I don't know how to even explain that. But that doesn't mean that, that you're only able to help the people that are close to you. Um, sometimes it's it's a stranger. Uh, sometimes it's something as simple as a, a smile or a hello as you pass in the hall, like it can make all the difference in the world to that person. Uh, but it's important when, when they do, when a person does open up to you that you try to resist the urge to fix their problem. Uh, many times when someone opens up to you about their problems, they're, they're not looking for you to fix everything for them. Uh, there I've, I've learned that the hard way several times. <laughs> uh, I try to, to offer suggestions and things like that. And I, and I can see the person just kind of shutting down. That's, that's not why they need to talk. They just need to get it out. Uh, sometimes they're, they're, they're simply looking for a sympathetic ear and, and they need to talk. Uh, you know, try not to offer too many suggestions. Uh, just let them do the talking. Sometimes all they need is, is to be heard. Uh, no judgment, no suggestions, no solutions. Uh, they just need to vent. Uh, just be there for them and, and listen. Be engaged in the conversation, but don't dominate it. Don't interject your own feelings in there or try to one-up them with your problems to make them feel like their problem isn't as, as big of a deal. That's that's not the way to go. Uh, let them lead the conversation. Just simply be there for them. Let them talk. Let them get it out. If they pause let them pause. That doesn't mean that they're done talking. Just, just let them go. Let them lead that conversation. Uh, this is why it's always important to be kind and understanding with one another. Uh, you never know what someone else might be going through at, at any given moment. Uh, they may seem perfectly fine, but something's just eating at them and, and you can, you can tell something's not right, but it's, it's not necessarily up to you to, to pry into that. Uh, just let them know that you're if if they need to talk if something's bothering them then you'll be there for them you know that they may not want to talk right then they may take you up on that later but just be there for one another and be open uh be open to to listen uh care about one another and if nothing else don't interject your problems into the conversation that's that's very important i've, I've done that before and it, it never it never ends well you get off topic you it, it you defeats the whole purpose of of what's happening and they probably won't come to you again uh or it'll be a while before they do um just be there for one another and be that person that you would want to have listen if you had a problem 
if you were struggling, think about that. Take that into consideration when you're talking to them. Um, put yourself in their shoes to where if if you had a problem and you were going to them, how would you want them to respond to you? Uh, always be considerate of the other person and, and don't overstep. Don't pry. Just let them do the talking and be there for them. Uh, so with that being said, at, at this time, I'd like to turn the show over to Barry and our, our spirit guest, uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen. Good morning. Morning. It's going to be a very interesting talk. On last Sunday, we had Bishop Sheen on our radio show. Okay. Uh, we had a roundtable discussion, and he was part of it. Bishop Sheen was an incredi incredible theologian. He was everywhere during the 50s and 60s, and that's when I grew up. You kids probably don't remember him as well. But <clears throat> I had to look him up. <laughs> for us old, really old folks, he, he was a really big deal in the early days of television. Uh, great pioneer. And his messages were always very good. Uh, he was obviously a member of the Catholic Church, but he always tried to help everybody's lives. So anyway, we have him with us this morning. We welcome him. Okay. And let us get started. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank Barry and Connie for allowing me to come back. I enjoyed being able to speak to the people again on Sunday night. I enjoyed being with the individuals that were also on the, on the roundtable discussion. And I'll give him a commercial. I, it would be fine if everyone listened to that show. I know he has it on his YouTube channel. It's very easy to see. And there was an huge amount of information brought forward about many subjects. But today, I want to talk to you about God. As we watch from over here, it's obvious that many are pulling away from God. Now, when I walked the earth, I was Catholic. And I managed to become bishop in the church. And the church basically supported me. There were times we had very strong disagreements. But I had a TV show and I had radio show. And yes, I did a lot. I tried. I tried to devote my life to making things better for as many people as I could. Today... We're seeing many out there that are just trying to drive people away from God. I think technology has a lot to do with it. Many people think that if you can't prove it beyond any shadow of a doubt that it can't exist. Well, I'm on the other side now. I'm speaking to you from the other side. So prove that I'm not. Go ahead. Try to really prove that God does not exist. You can't do it. Oh, you think you can. You think you're so smart now. You know all these things. But I can assure you that there is so much that you people do not understand. In our galaxy, we have many different cultures and civilizations. They are advanced beyond your wildest imaginations. When you meet them, you're going to think that you're a child that's just been born. Do not think that technology and science and all of your college professors know everything. Anybody that tells you that God does not exist is lying to you. Oh, they'll, they'll find out. They'll definitely find out. I can assure you that God is more real than anything you can imagine. His abilities outreach anything you can imagine. 
I wish, I truly wish, as I look and watch of all of those of you out there, that I could come to you and explain this. I've tried to come through people's dreams, and I've tried many things. Thankfully, God decided to send Barry back so that he can speak the messages of those of us on the other side. But now the challenge is to get people to listen to him. Oh, there's no problem getting people to listen to those that speak against God. Many of them are well-funded. Many of them have got access to huge audiences. Today in your schools, many of the professors consider themselves extremely liberal. And that liberalism has led to them not believing in God. That is so sad. God is the only reason you're here. He has sent you back to learn. He has sent you back so that your soul can progress when it returns. And he has sent you back so that you can die. It is only through death that your soul can return to his heaven. I see so many people living in fear right now, and you have good reason. Many of your politicians only believe in power. Many of them simply want to create chaos in your world. They think if they create chaos, that they can bring people away from God. They can destroy the powerful countries of the world. They can do much with chaos. They use propaganda to spread their chaos. Now, you may not think of it like this, but if a professor in a university lies to his students about the existence of God, that's propaganda. He's lying. I can totally assure to you that he is not telling the truth. I know that I was a member of the Catholic Church. I was a bishop. I had a lot of power in the church. There were many things going on in the church that, in which I should have been more active in stopping. I admit that I made, I made mistakes. I'm human. The Catholic Church is a wonderful religion. The people, the Catholic People are wonderful, wonderful people. They believe in God. Many of them devote many hours a week into worship of God. There were some bad people in the church, just as there's bad people in all religions. And that has driven people away from the Catholic Church. As I watched all this take place from the other side, I asked myself what I could have done to have stopped some of it. And yes, there were things I could have done. But I truly did not understand the depth of depravity that some of our priests had. Much of it was kept hidden from me. But yes, there were things I could have done. Now, as you're sitting there listening to me, I want you to think that there are things that you could do. There are things that you can do to help others. There are things that you can do to help yourself. Let your own soul become the foundation. Get comfortable with yourself. Know that you're one of God's children. Know that you're loved by God. Know that you've been sent back by God and know that God will have you return to his heaven. These are all actual facts. Why is it so hard for people to understand all of the miracles that are around you are created by our God? Look at the flowers. Look at a newborn baby. 
You know what sickens me? That people can look at a newborn baby and think that they should die. I've been against abortion all my life. How do you think God would have you kill a baby in the womb? Today, people would have them kill the baby after they arrive. That's murder. That is one thing that the Catholic Church has preached for many years, and that is one thing where they are totally correct. How is it that a God of love would teach violence and killing? Now, there are times that you, your military must kill in order to protect the innocent and to save the existence of many countries. That's a totally different situation. We watch from this side and we see many ways in which civilization is degrading itself. The current war in Europe is totally, totally a terrible thing. You have several sick individuals that have decided that power is better than allowing people to live their lives in peace. They are creating terrible problems in Europe. Millions of people are displaced. Thousands are being killed. The long-term repercussions of what is taking place in Europe are profound. It has always been that the people of Russia, and they're wonderful people, have had to suffer. They're told lies. They're told many things. And when you hear lies long enough, you tend to believe it, and it becomes the truth. And the poor people of Russia are assuming these lies that they're being told is the truth. The day will come that they will understand, but it's going to be terrible for them. They are going to basically have to rebuild their country as well. And they won't have the help that the Ukraine's going to have because they started all this. It is up to the people to understand the existence and love of God. And it is up to the people to determine who controls their political systems. God controls the religious systems. God is incredible. When you arrive over here, you'll truly understand that. I truly wish that there was some way that I could enter all of your hearts and convince you of the existence of God. Now, God's already done that because there is a small amount of his energy in the heart of every human. But it is impossible to know it is there until you acknowledge his presence. Once you acknowledge his presence, his love flows in. Your life becomes much better. You become happier. You look at people differently. You think, well, that person's showing anger towards me. I should get up in his face. Well, when you truly love God, you understand that meeting anger with anger is not the answer. Many things you fear, you will not fear after you accept God. The true path to happiness is loving and understanding God. I wish, I truly wish, that all of you listening would take time to help another person or group or whatever. 
help lead others to understand the realities of God. Help them understand the realities of anger and hatred. Help them understand that when somebody tells them that God does not exist, they're being lied to. The existence of God is an absolute truth. The existence of God is what allows all things to take place. Accepting the love of God in your heart is the first step towards happiness. If you do not love God, you don't know happiness. Many of you out there have got incredible wealth. And you think that leads to happiness? Look around you. Are you happy? Are you thinking somebody's always trying to get that wealth? When you look at someone trying to help you, do you say, what do you want? I know you want something. Everybody wants something. Well, guess what? There are people that just want you to believe in God. I know that goes against much of the things that you now believe in. God just simply wants you to be happy, to believe, to help others. And he wants humans to evolve into a society where there is no violence, there is no hatred, there is only love, there's coexistence, everybody gets along. When humans achieve that level, they will be rewarded with longer lifespans. Today, God brings you home fairly rapidly. The reason is that he doesn't want you to make more mistakes until he can talk to you and show you what you've done wrong. All things are common sense. All things relate to the love of God. All things start with the love of God in your heart. I hope that you will tell your friends about this small opportunity that I have to speak to you. I thank Barry for allowing me to come through right away. I asked him and he said, absolutely. I'd love to have you do it. Go to somebody, tell them about God and let them know that it is that love of God in your heart is what has brought you happiness. And you only want to share that happiness with others. So I thank you. In my time, we going, we went through a world war. We had atomic bombs invented. We used them. We killed millions of people. Hitler overran the country. I saw all these things in person. I do not want this to all be repeated again. I can tell you it's terrible. So thank you for listening. I know God is blessing you today. I know that he is helping you spread goodness. And I really know that he loves all of you. When you're over here, you understand that. So goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope I didn't bore you today. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. All right, next week, we're going to have Archangel Michael come back. Okay. Protector. So that's who you'll be listening to next week. Okay. Have a great week. I hope everybody that heard the message today <laughs> follow the words. I know that we do all week long. I know that you do. And we'll see you next week. Okay. Well, there you have it. A, a great message from uh, Bishop Fulton Sheen. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. And, and uh, I'd like him to always welcome anytime he'd like. Uh, so uh, like he had said, you know, it's if, if you're feeling the, the joy of God in your heart and you're, you've, you've been blessed and, and you believe, share that with people. 
uh, share his message with people, share this show with people. Uh, that's, that's the best thing you can do uh, is, is allow God into your heart, uh, hand him the reins, you know, let him, let him guide you and, and share that with as many people as possible. Uh, help us spread the message and, and spread the message yourself. Uh, do everything you can to, to reach as many people as possible. Uh, so we're, we're looking forward to uh, speaking with uh, Archangel Michael next week. And until then, uh, be good to each other. Uh, look out for one another and do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And God bless. Mm-hmm.